I've been using After Effects for nearly 15 years and here are five simple editing tricks that I wish I would have known when I first started. Each of these editing concepts can be used to enhance any After Effects project you're working on, so let's jump in. If you're looking to enhance your work very fast, one thing that you should be doing to your work is adding a quick opening matte transition. Several ways to do this, but it's so easy to do. So for example, we can come here, grab the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle to fill out an entire scene. And we can animate this very easily by say, animating the scale, breaking the chain, moving the keyframe forward and setting the Y scale to 0%. And then all we need to do is set the blend mode to stencil alpha. And within about 15 seconds, you'll have this nice opening transition for your entire scene. We can also build multiple layers to this. So for example, this time around, I can grab say the lips tool and I can fill up my entire composition. You know, I'll animate the scale from zero to 100%. And instead of using stencil alpha, you can actually set the track mat of your work to that shape layer. And then we can quickly go to layer new solid, set their color to any color we want put underneath everything. So now we have this nice multi-layered transition. This next technique is something I've been using for a very long time, and that's being able to add multiple colors to any animated graphic or property that you have fairly quick. So how this works is simple. I have this animated graphic here. I'm gonna take the shape layer and the title. I'm gonna go to layer pre-compose. I'll call it graphic one. And then I'll go to effect generate and I'll grab fill. I'll set this color to any color that I want. Then I'll take the graphic and I'll go to edit duplicate. I'll offset it in my timeline by a few frames, change the color, and then I can duplicate this one more time, offset by a few frames, and delete the fill effect. And this gives you that multicolored animation and it's so easy to do. One quick way that you can add extra detail to your work is by applying a shape map, which takes no time at all to create. So how this works is you can grab any shape or you can grab the text tool and type out any symbol you want. I'll just type in the plus symbol. And all I need to do is hit T on my keyboard for opacity, add a keyframe and move it forward by one frame, set the opacity to 0% and then move forward by four frames exactly and just add a keyframe. Then I'm gonna alt the stopwatch and do a quick loop out expression with a capital O, open, close, parenthesis. This way, this will be constantly flickering throughout our entire composition. Now what I can do is take the layer, duplicate it, and simply move it randomly around our composition and create a handful of duplicates. And you can copy this technique to add other objects as well and mix everything together. And then just offset these layers in your timeline just by a few frames. So the flickering will not happen all at the same exact moment. And then you go to your main project, apply that shape map onto your work. And now you have an interesting way to apply a little bit of exciting graphics to your work. So here's a technique that I usually overlook that I need to start paying more attention to, which is the blending and the shading of your scene by using lighting effects to highlight what's important for your viewers to see. So for example, I can quickly create an adjustment layer and then apply a very basic CC vignette effect from the stylized menu. And this will help darken the edges of my scene so I can focus in on the center of my scene. However, I'm gonna get a little bit more advanced than the CC vignette effect. So with an adjustment layer selected, I'm gonna go to perspective and add a CC spotlight effect, which which has this very nice narrow beam of light and some anchor points. So here's an anchor point in the center and I can use these anchor points to reposition the beam of light. And this one effect brings a whole new perspective to the scene and makes it a little bit more dramatic. However, one of my free kits that I've been using for years is this volumetric light and dust pack, which has just all these nice beams of light that I'll link in the description so you can have them as well. And these are absolutely amazing. So how this works, I can drag one of these on top of my scene and set the blend mode to say hard light. And this gives me a whole different look as well. And if I want to take this effect and put it on the other side as well, I can duplicate it, go to layer, transform, flip, horizontal. I'll set their blend modes to screen. Then I'll pre-compose them, we'll call it light. And then set the blend mode to hard light. So this way you can mix multiple lighting layers together and it can make a massive difference in your scene. So there's a few ways that you can boost the contrast of your scene while maintaining what's important for your viewers to see. Creating motion graphics can be a lot of fun, but perhaps you don't always have the time. To give you a head start, we have a full 750 plus motion graphics pack for After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can browse templates using our extension panel and apply them with a single click. Then you can change the parameters and you're done. You can also get your hands on our free duck pack with the links in the description below. Our templates are our equivalent of a Patreon, so if you pick up anything, you will be supporting this channel, so thank you very much. The last trick that we're gonna talk about is adding grit to your scene, giving it character. There's a couple ways to do this. So for example, I can just create an adjustment layer, go to effect, noise and grain, and add just a noise effect real fast, and increase the noise amount, and if I zoom in here, you can't really see it probably, but there's some noise in this, and you might not like that, 
but it adds a little bit of grit to your scene and it will take away the imperfections, which to me is the goal. But if you get your hands on some texture maps, which I'll link in the description as well, and you set that layer to screen, you're gonna have a much different dynamic for your scene, which is great for adding grit like this. If you wanna keep it a little bit more simple, you can use like a single texture like this. And you know, if it's white, you set the blend mode to multiply. And these are just a few ways that you can add texture, grit, and grain to your work just to make it a little bit more interesting.